Hi folks, I'm Matt and welcome to my top 200 games of all time. That's right, I'm going through all of these games in my collection here. We are at number 150 and here is a fun one here I want to talk about. A new game added in my collection, Pizarro and Company. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's also called Magellan uh, as well. But in this game, it's basically just a bidding game where you're bidding on these explorers. And if you win the bid, you get to place your ship on the first space of that explorer. There are three spaces here. Now, as the rounds go on, the number of explorers you can bid on is less, meaning there's not enough for the first round, there's enough for everyone to get at least one explorer. The next round, though, there's a little less explorer cards. And then on the third round, there's only one of each card. So it's even harder to get to that third uh, level. And the reason they do that because uh, as you're moving across the board, you're also going to be scoring wherever your ship ends, you're also going to be scoring those big victory points at the end. Uh, some of the cards left in your hand, the lower points are worth more victory point, uh, lower uh, number cards are worth more victory points, even though they don't have, they're not worth m much gold, and the big gold is worth little victory points. And of course, you're placing the cards, it's always blind, then everyone reveals, and whoever has the most will get that um, uh, explorer. Now, the other cool thing about this is, though, those explorers can come with different conditions or different bonuses or different special abilities that can help you on the game. And both boards are double sided, so you can always switch around the game to have some of their power, some of the explorer's powers will change as you flip around the board. And I really like that as well. This is a very straightforward, simple bidding game, I believe. And it, it is a lot of fun to play. The scorekeeping is a little bit hard because, well, just the way the score track is on the board. But other than that, it is a really great game. Now, there's not too much to this game, but for what you get in the game, I think it's definitely worth it. Now, I got this for super cheap. I'd been interested in it because uh, for some reason the artwork, that cover, I, I know it looks boring to you, but I was like, ooh, that looks interesting. What's in that? And so I saw, I said, oh, this seems like a simple enough game. And we had a great time playing it too uh, because you want to spend the least amount of money to get the Explorer. But there are some Explorers you're like, no, man, I'm going all in on this one. That's part of my strategy. And again, your strategy will change on the flip of a board for the next game because you're having to say, oh, they don't do that anymore. You know, I have to get something, I have to come up with a new strategy. So I like that the games will be different based, and it's also if you get outbid for something, you're like, well, I'm not going to get that anymore because if you get outbid in the first round, you can't bid in the second round. And, and same thing goes for the second round. You get outbid in the second round, you can't move up to the third round of bidding. Uh, so there's a lot of cool aspects to this game. Uh, well underrated in my opinion, but great game. My number 150, Pizarro and Company. My number 149 just got a reprint this year, and it's called Mississippi Queen. Mississippi Queen, you are on a steamboat traveling down the Mississippi River. As you're doing that, you're picking up two Southern Bells along the way and trying to be the first one to the dock to win. Now, the cool thing about this game is uh, you can speed up, slow down, uh, and you will be slowing down a lot because you have to slow down to a one, the lowest speed, to pick up a Southern Bell. Now, you can't just automatically go from a you know six speed to a one. You gotta slowly do that over turns or burn coal, which is gonna let you you know speed, uh, speed up or move down a little bit faster. However, you can run out of coal. There are coal stations if you have the expansion. I don't know if it's in the new game, but in the expansion of the old game, they had coal places, and you probably, if you've been burning through your coal, have to stop there, but you have to slow down to a one to do it. There's other obstacles that can make you slow down or make you turn the wrong way. Also, I love when you get to the edge of a river, river tile, you roll it, and whatever the arrow points, left, right, or straight, that's where you gotta put the river. Sometimes you thought, I think it's going to go left or center. Nope, it goes right and you are you went from first to second or maybe even third just because of the way the river bend. I love that. Uh, for a slow racing game, this game goes fast, 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 very fast pace. And you have to be at the slowest speed when you get into the dock, which makes sense, right? If you're going full speed, you're ram into the dock. Oh man, whenever we play this game, we just have a blast. I don't even know who won last time. I know it was close, but it doesn't really matter because we were just all having so much fun. Now, I got the Black Rose expansion for this. I love this. I'm pretty sure they would have put that all into the uh, new 
uh, version and I would get the new version if I didn't already have the old one but it didn't seem to be anything too new for me but I'm, I am glad that they reprinted it because I thought this was just a fantastic game. Now it's been in my top 100 for the past two years. The first time it got ranked at 85 then it moved up to 80 because it's just a fun racing game. It moves down 69 spots here because I just don't play it as much as I used to. And I, I'm almost positive that's the reason it kind of dropped out of my top uh, 100. Well, that and plus I got new, you know, new board games, but probably just because it didn't get played as much. But Mississippi Queen, whew, if, you're, if you're looking at the reprint and you're sitting on the fence, let me push you onto the side of buying Mississippi Queen. I really think it's worth it. Great game. Number 148 is a new game added to my collection. It is called Explorers of the North Sea. This is one of the three games from the North Sea expansion. Now I don't have shipwrights in the North Sea because that game looks lame, but I did get Explorers in the North Sea and actually enjoyed it. Here is basically you're focusing on action points here. You have certain action points every round and you have to decide what you're going to do. You have these Vikings, they're moving around from island to island, they're building forts or attacking places or gathering livestock or fighting other Vikings as well. There's a lot of different options you have to have and by using your points wisely what, what you're going to do, how you can get the most money. There are ways to get extra action points as well. But the game is pretty cool in a way. I really do enjoy it. Now, Explorers of the North Sea, I got a slight bad taste in my mouth because the guy I bought it from said it was complete and it was missing pieces. And I was super upset over that. And he said, oh, I don't have them. Maybe you can just call Renegade Games and they'll give you some. Oh, thanks, dude. Uh, so I did, and they graciously gave me the pieces I needed. Unfortunately, I haven't played the game since then. Uh, and this is another game that I probably would have ranked higher if it had been complete, meaning the I think it was the expansion that was missing pieces. And I probably would have ranked it higher if it would have been complete, but that I was missing stuff, it just hurt me. You could still play the game, I was missing a few tokens, but they were really cool tokens. I was like, man, I re really wish we could use these in our game. So uh, this is another one though that I only played a few times prior to reviewing it and then it just never got to the table again. Uh, so that's another reason probably it didn't make to my top 100 because I know it, it may have the potential one day to do it because I think Explorer of the North Sea is neat. It's a good game. Is it the best of the series? Well, hmm, are you looking at my shelf here? Hmm, there may be a few that may be a little bit better. But I do enjoy Explorers of the North Sea, I need to say. And uh, I look forward to playing it again soon. All right, number 147 is another new game into my collection. It's New Bedford. New Bedford, you are whaling. And it's basically worker placement where you're placing these workers around town, getting resources to build your boat, then get uh, food supplies to send it out to sea for a very long time because the longer it's out there, the more whaling it's going to get. It's going to be catching them whales. Whales come from a bag. You're digging in the bag, bringing out the whales. Uh, some are water pieces. Water pieces are worth nothing. They go back into the bag, which means eventually, as the game goes on, you're going to have less and less whales, more water than whales. I like that. Uh, I always love worker placement. Uh, you, you're also adding tiles to your town. Uh, your side of town, if anyone plays on it, they'll owe you some money. Money is really tight in this game. Uh, resources are tight for that point too. But the cool thing about this is while your ship is out sailing and going getting whales, you've got to make sure you have enough money to process those wells when they come in. The bigger ones, of course, cost the most. Smaller ones cost the least. So there may be wells you may have to pass up on. You're like, I don't think I could afford these wells because if they get to the pier and you can't afford to you know, cut them up, slice and dice them, then someone else can pay for them and get that well from you. They don't have to give the money to you. They can just buy it because it goes up for auction. And if that happens, you're giving them victory points too because these wells are also worth victory points at the end of the game. Man, the pieces of this game are great. The look of this game is great. This is, I don't know if my nephews remember, we, I, we just recently filmed their, uh, recorded their top 10 games, I think for me. And I think they forgot about this game because now that I think about it, they really enjoyed this game. And they, they would have probably put it probably in their top 10 if they had remembered it. But when we played it, it was so much fun. Uh, the reason, why is it not in my top 100? I don't feel like I have to explain this for every game, but this one I, I do know. And it's not the game's fault, I guess, but you only get, at the most, two workers. So you only have two actions every round. It's like, mm, I understand at first when there's not that big of a city, but when the city gets big, you've got a million options and all you can do is pick two? 
that, the game goes by way too fast for that. So I wish there was a way that, or there was a rule set to where you could get, you know, maybe a third guy. I'd even take a, I'd, I'd take a third. I want a fourth, but even a third guy later on, you could maybe unlock him later on. I don't know, uh, but two actions just doesn't feel like enough for this game. Uh, I do have the expansion. I do love the expansion. Is it absolutely necessary to play with it? No, but I will never play without it now because I think it's so cool. Uh, the little mini uh, expansion, I do have it. We just have it. It's just some extra whales with some special rules. I just haven't put them in the bag yet, but oh man, New Bedford is a beautiful game. Uh, like I said, the only reason is that just two worker placement, two actions, that's all you get? Ugh! When the Because at the end of the game, you're just it's killing you. But if you ever thought about getting New Bedford, I think it's cheap online too. So great game, underrated game. Glad to have it on my list. Looking at my list, most of these next few games are brand new. Uh, the next one at 146 is Bohemian Villages. A uh, fun little dice chucking game where you're rolling dice and putting them together to uh, place one of your workers in one of the buildings. Uh, and so you're getting certain bonus points at usually at the end of the game, or maybe you're playing short term. And some some characters, if like if everyone's at the meal, the meal pays out to everyone who's there. So you cash in, bring your players back, replace them on the board. Uh, there are some places like I think it's the town or the inn. If that square fills up, you can make a lot of points. However, if it doesn't fill up, you're going to get zero points. Uh, so there's some, a little risk reward there. This is a really fun game, very simple to play, easy, 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 nice little filler game. I do enjoy playing Bohemian Villages, my old gaming group does. I also think that it flies by pretty fast because even though you're rolling a lot of dice, you only have a few decisions on what you can do and what you may want to do or may not want to do. And I didn't see much analysis paralysis in this game. It flowed really quickly. So for that reason, I really like Bohemian Vill Villages and glad it is on my list and in my collection. Number 145 is Vienna. I remember I got this because of a request from a viewer said, Matt, have you ever played this game? I've always wanted to see it. And then I looked online and I realized no one has done a video review on this. So I bought the game because you can get it pretty cheap. And I played it, and as you saw in the game, it's pretty neat. You're basically rolling your dice and then taking actions, usually from smallest number to highest number, but you got to wait on those combos, and, and you may, you may want to jump ahead. This is a game where you can only move forward, you can't move back. Well, you can, but you have to spend coin. But the thing is, though, you're trying to get the best out of your dice rolls and get the best combination or some bonus cards or some extra victory points. Do whatever you can to move up that track. There, there is a low. This is a low-scoring game, but the game really picks up after a while when you're trying out different strategies. I would think you're trying the same strategy over and over again. So far in our plays, we haven't had that issue, but it's neat to see because of whatever cards are dealt out to, you're trying to get set collections with different icons on them, and you can get big victory points off that. We didn't realize that the first time we played, and then I kind of figured out what it was saying. I was like, oh, I don't think those are big. Why would they be up there if they weren't big victory points? So I started doing it, then we all started doing it. And it is a really good game. The only thing I hate about this game, I mentioned in the review, was it's a double-sided board. So you think maybe the actions would be in a different order on the other side. No, they're exactly the same. They just made a day version and a night version of the same game. Why? You know, I wish they would have just switched things up at night, done the actions a little bit differently, or given us different actions completely. I think they would have added more replayability to the game. But as it is, it's a fun game. Glad to have it on the list at 145. My number 144 is a new game called The River. In this worker placement game, you're working on, well, the river. You're gathering supplies, trying to build buildings for victory points. The more buildings you build, you can make it unlock another worker to help you out. But watch out, eventually these workers will be disappearing as you're building the river. The longer, the further around the river you go, the more workers you lose. But that's because your actions are gonna be hopefully more powerful because you got these great tiles going over your rivers. Uh, rivers can give you extra resources, they can give you extra storage space or special in-game victory points or special bonuses at the end of each round and it's really fun. I, I, this game gets a lot of hate for being too simple and being like meh, it's a, just a regular 
worker placement game. I, I disagree. The board is very tight. There's not many moves. You can get locked out of a move really quick. But there's lots of different options you can have. And matching up your tiles makes a big deal too. Of course you want a good combo you can work with. But if you can match them up by color vertically, that's going to give you some pretty steep victory points as well. And there's two ways to end this game. One is to build I think it's all five buildings on your player board or get all the tiles on your river, which I haven't done yet. No one's done yet, but I really want to do one day. Uh, but it's neat that you have two different ways to win. So there's two different strategies going on, but there's a lot of strategies going on. There is a turkey, which is a wild card, you know, wild resource. So it's a wild turkey. Uh, but uh, like I said, a lot going on with this game. Yes, it is a little simple worker placement, but I believe there's a lot more strategy there than a lot of people give credit for. So I really enjoy the river, which is why it's on my list. My number 143 is another new game to my collection, and it is hard to pronounce. Yasfahan? Yasfahan, I guess. I don't know, in this game, basically, you're rolling the dice, putting them in the spaces on the board, and then choosing actions based on where those dice are. Now, there's lots of things you're trying to do around the city every round. You're trying to control different neighborhoods. You're, you're trying to get, you know, get the most points out of that. You're also maybe going to the board and moving your little caravan uh, instead of moving things on the dice, or moving the inspector to screw other, other, other players with those dice, or just doing different things at random, whatever you want to do. It's really neat how this game works. If you don't, you don't know, I'm, how, I, it's hard for me to explain a game, I said, without it being on the table here, but Yasfaharan is just a little gem. I don't remember how I found it. I think I was trying to find a game and with one letter of the alphabet each. That sounds stupid, but I think that's probably what I was doing. And I found this one. I was like, oh, this actually looks pretty good. And they got little camel pieces. And basically there's engine building too, because you're trying to unlock some uh, extra abilities in the game. And I, I feel this game probably doesn't get enough love. It probably would have been ranked a lot higher if I would have played it more. Again, this is one of those games that I played like three or four times for the review and then I shelved it. I just haven't had time to play it since. But I really want to get back to the table because I remember I really enjoyed it. I just had a stack of new games this high that I had to get reviewed at the time or played first and then reviewed. So kind of rushed through Yasfaharan, but uh, I want to get it to the board, uh, the table again because I think it's going to really impress me. Uh, the last time we played, I was really impressed. So this game is an older game too. That's, that's another incredible thing. It's an older game and it's still good. Anyway, Yasfaharan or however you pronounce it. I'm sure someone's going to say something in the comments. All right, let's go for one more new game on this list. It's called Sentinel. Sitting it, you are bidding for and programming uh, different uh, droids. Now, how you do this is you have goals on what you need to match on the uh, on the sides of the player card because on your board are certain numbers. Now those numbers can go up or down depending on the card that you place in between it. The card may say, hey, move that down one pip, move this one up one pip. With a one can going down to a six and a six, can, six moves up to a one. So as you're programming, you're trying to get a, a droid in each one of your slots here, it's really screwing up with your numbers and you can't get the best victory points or maybe sometimes you won't get any victory points if you don't get the right droid for it. Uh, there are things called apprentices that, that can lock that die and make you not have to change anything, which is really good, but you have to be careful in using those because you have a limited supply of those each round. And uh, also what you're bidding for, because there's some bonus points in the bidding area too that you, you definitely want to take advantage of because a majority there would, would win. Also you can use apprentices, not for the bidding, but they can add on to tiebreakers for whoever wants those extra bonus points that are up, for, up at every round. This game is really smart. Uh, I remember a friend of mine told me about it and I went ahead and got it. Now looking at the cover I said this is not for me, but I traded a game for it and we played it. Ooh. It is a real mind bender because you're trying to say, man, if I get that droid, I could pair him up with this droid here, but then I have to keep this one even because I can't have this go above a three because that would ruin him. But he needs to have two matching ones, so I have to somehow get the six down to a three. Mm, I know, I'll play that one later to put that one here. Seriously, you go, you go down the rabbit hole when you're looking at this game. And it makes me fear that there's going to be analysis paralysis. The times we played it, we were just marveling over all the decisions and how hard it was. Because I'll be honest, even I was pausing a little bit in between just to kind of sit there and go, wait, 
let me, let me look at these droids again, make sure I got this right. There's a lot of different ways and different strategies here. And this is a game though that my entire gaming group said after playing, they were really confused at first and then after the first game went, I think we got it, can we play it one more time? Sure, it always gets played twice at the table uh, whenever it comes out because the first time we were like, uh, let me see that again, I think I'm interested. And people do much better the second round. So send it, really great game. Gra glad to have it on my list at number 142. And finally at 141 is Coney Island. Oh, I love Coney Island. Coney Island, of course, you're uh, putting all these little acts, uh, circus acts basically, or carnival acts around this little town, and you're tr converting those carnival acts into actual, you know, Ferris wheels or a uh, Coney, you know, a Coney Island, you know, vending machine or something like that, a little activity there. Uh, I really enjoy this game because it's got such, it, it's, first off, it's so simple and it's so fun to play, but it's got such an easy mechanism where you have this board, you have this player board, and a lot of things are covered. So you're not gonna get much money, much actions, not much cubes, cubes can be turned into a lot of things. But as you're putting ax out on the board, you're getting more of whatever resource it is and more more bonuses, I should say, in the game. But eventually, you're gonna have to recall those performers because you're gonna be putting a you know uh, event or a little place, a merry-go-round or something there that's gonna fill it up and give you a ton of victory points. But however, you just lost all your powerful moves by getting victory points. Now you have to start all over again, you know, trying to get you know nice a nice powerful board but eventually you're gonna to have to cash in on it to get those victory points. At the end, it's really gonna hurt you too because the more performers you have out, the more money you're gonna be losing. So you also want it, there's a good balance. You're thinking, oh, I think the game's gonna end. The game can end like that. And so you gotta be careful and not be caught asleep by having all the, you're trying to do one big move, but the game just won't allow it sometimes. It'll end and you'll be stuck there with you know, not getting all the points you wanted. Uh, the game also has these cards, they have these special abilities on them, you can use them, you can steal them from other players. Uh, at first you won't have that much money, then eventually you'll have enough money to afford maybe two or three of these, and you'll be trying to use so many strategies in this game. It's insane. I really love this game. I remember last year it was ranked at 117, and I was, it, this is kind of weird to say, I was cheering for this on my list, because it did get played a, a couple of times this year. And every time I play it's like, man, it's like, this should be a number one game. I've never had a bad game with it, but unfortunately it slips another 24 spots on the list. And to be honest, folks, that is solely, solely because I added so many board games. I added way more, than, there's way more than 24 new board games on my list uh, that are above Coney Island. So it even beat out a ton of other new games as well. But it just doesn't have the umph, I guess, to make it into my top 100. But folks, oh, Coney Island, uh, that designer too, I didn't, figure out who they are because I have a few games with them that are really good. Anyway, I'm rambling. So come back next time. I'll ramble more about my top 200 games of all time. See you later.